Welcome to Crime Maze. In this video we are going to talk about the 5 unsolved mass murders. Before starting this video like this video and subscribe to Crime Maze channel for future updates. The FBI defines mass murder as the killing of four or more people in a short period of time. Mass murder usually ends with the offender taking his own life. Mass murders go unsolved because the culprit has greater room to make mistakes and leave evidence. Unsolved mass killings actually exist, and these are five of the most horrific. Number 5. The Yogurt Shop Murders On December 6, 1991, just before midnight, a fire broke out at a yogurt business in a northwest Austin Strip Mall. The scene was discovered by firemen extinguishing the blaze, and I can't believe it's yogurt Amy Ayers, 13, Eliza Thomas, 17. Sarah and Jennifer Harbison, 15 and 17, were found dead among the ash and rubble. Sarah and Amy had been shopping at the neighboring North Cross Mall before stopping by the yogurt shop just before 11 p.m. to assist close up for the night. They had scheduled a sleepover that night. The four girls were chained and naked. Their moans and pleadings were muffled by their own garments. Amy was located in the shop center, while the other three were found in the back. Eliza, Sarah, and Jennifer were all heaped on top of each other, shot in the head gangland style. Unsurprisingly, Sarah had been raped. Then the fire was lit to obliterate any evidence of the heinous crimes. The case was doomed from the start. Firefighters equipped with water cannons arrived first and trampled and trekked through the crime scene, contaminating and destroying any evidence that might have been left behind. During the inquiry, 342 people were suspected. Nonetheless, the case remains unresolved. Number 4. The Walker Family Murders Christine and Cliff Walker married in 1954 and lived in a farmhouse near Osprey, Florida. The young family lived happily in a clabbered house in cattle country. Their abode was basic, but they survived. On December 19, 1959, the family visited a friend. Christine left first. Cliff said he'd follow with Jimmy, three, and Debbie, one, who wanted to ride in their daddy's Jeep. Christine came at 4, 5 p.m. She didn't park normally. Researchers hypothesis that someone else parked there. Was it a friend she invited in? The assailant raped Christine behind closed doors. After that, he put a gun at her head and fired. The first shot grazed her skin just above her hairline. The second shot pierced Christine's skull. Cliff arrived with his kids as the killer dragged Christine's lifeless body into the living room. A gunshot crashed into Cliff's right eye as he opened the front door. Only the kids remained. Did the killer ponder what to do with them? After all, they were infants. Doubtful. Jimmy was headshot. He writhed and wailed near his deceased father before being shot twice more. Debbie, who had crawled to her mother's side, was headshot, but she didn't die, and the killer was out of ammunition. He dragged the bleeding child into the bathroom and drowned her. Perry Smith and Richard Hickok, renowned assassins in Truman Capotes in cold blood, were among the suspects. In 2013, they were unearthed in DNA compared to that recovered at the crime site. The killer left a bloodied cowboy boot and a fingerprint on the bathroom faucet handle. Despite these hints and over 500 suspects over the years, the case remains unsolved. Number 3. The Burger Chef Murders on November 17, 1978, in Speedway, Indiana, it was a wintry night. Jane Freet, 20, was concluding her night shift at Burger Chef with Ruth Shelton, 17, Danny Davis, 16, and Mark Flemons, 16. This included cleaning up after themselves and locking up. Shortly after midnight, another off-duty employee saw the back door was wide open. When he entered, the restaurant was dead. The cash register was open and empty. He dialed 911. Investigators discovered a mess at the corporate headquarters and about $500 gone. No handbags were found, but authorities suspect the teen stole the cash to enjoy a wild night. Other employees would clean up the eatery by afternoon. When Jane's abandoned automobile was located, it became clear that this wasn't just a case of adolescents having fun. Police moved their attention to an abduction, but it was too late to collect any evidence at the scene. 
It was pristine. On November 19, a dreadful find was made in a field 20 miles away. Mark had a concussion and Jane had been stabbed to death. The blade snapped off and lodged in her body. He was shot, as was Ruth. Despite a thorough investigation, the killer or killers were never found. Number 2. The Lane Bryant Shooting Lane Bryant was an apparel store in Tinley Park's Brookside Marketplace. Jennifer McFarland, 42, was working as a store manager on February 2, 2008. She wasn't supposed to work that morning, but she didn't want her employees inundated. She was assisting an anonymous female employee. Around 10 a.m., a delivery man entered the store. Sarah Safransky, 22, Connie R., Woolfolk, 37, and Carrie Hudak Chuso, 33, were also inside the store at the time. They were five different ladies from diverse backgrounds, but they were permanently linked by fate. The alleged delivery driver had no items. He forced the terrified women into the back room, bound them with duct tape, and told them to lie face down. The women were then executed. The nameless employee miraculously survived the shooting when the bullet missed her head. She lay unmoving, lifeless. A composite sketch of the killer was made using the survivor's description. He was described as a 5 feet 9 inches to 6 tall African-American man weighing 260 pounds. He was in all black and aged 25 to 35. Three to five cornrows went from the back to the front of his head. One strand with green beads. It was thought to be a bungled heist. The timing seemed surprising given the shop's short existence and lack of sales. Police said evidence was collected at the crime scene, but did not specify what it was. Concerned citizens gathered over 7 tips and offered a $100,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. Nonetheless, the killer remains unidentified. Number 1. The Frog Boys. The 26th of March 1991 was a national holiday in Korea due to local elections. Yu chi 1, 13, Jo ho Yun, 12, Kim young gyu 10, and Kim Jong-sik, 9, agreed to go to Mount Waryong to look for frogs. They never came back. Their disappearance startled the small, protected nation. Thousands of cops and troops scoured the country. Locals aided them, and some of the boys' parents resigned their jobs to join them in their quest. Their images appeared on cigarette packs and milk cartons. Their abduction spawned two movies and songs. On September 26, 2002, a lone hiker gathering acorns on Mount Waryong came across a terrible scene, human remains. He was around two kilometers from the boys' home when he noticed the discarded shoes and apparel. This area had been searched extensively. A cyclone that hit the mountain just a few weeks previously may have washed them into view. Another hypothesis is that their murderer buried their body here years later. When the parents arrived, they were shocked to see the garments found at the crime site. Their sons wore the same small rubber sneakers and t-shirts when they left home 13 years ago. A 13-year-old boy's father, Kim Hyundu, thanked everyone for their support. The boys had gotten lost and died of weariness and hypothermia. Their bodies were found embracing each other, and authorities speculated they were trying to stay warm. The boys used to visit and play around this mountain and knew the direction so well, said a family member. It's impossible they got lost here, stated Kim Jong uncle. Shik's their garments had also been removed and tied in knots. The skeletons were sent to Kyungpook National University's forensic squad. Three of the skulls had considerable damage. According to the excavation, the skulls featured severe cracks and perforations, indicating they had been bludgeoned or cut. According to a member of the forensic medicine team, marks on three of the five skulls seemed to be made by blows with metal objects, presumably tools. They were found murdered. Then the statue of limitations ran out, leaving many questions unanswered. Who slayed the frogs? How could one person kill all five of them if they found a sadistic killer in the woods? Surely the others would flee if the first boy was attacked. Was it a group? Did he they shackle the boys? Why did that happen? After 26 years, we are no closer to finding answers to these gruesome questions than we were when the victims were discovered.
What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.